the integral of 1 over x ln x dx. We need a little substitution here. Let's try to do it in our heads first, and then I'll write out the details afterwards. So if we were to let u equal ln x, then du is 1 over x dx. So we get the ln of absolute ln x plus c. All right, now if that was too quick for you, let's formally do the substitution. We're letting u equal ln x, so that du is 1 over x dx. Okay, so let me just rewrite this integral, 1 over x ln x dx, as 1 over ln x times 1 over x dx. All right, because then you could see that u is right here and du is right here. So this becomes the integral of 1 over u du, which is ln absolute u plus c. And then substituting ln x back in for u, we get ln of absolute ln x plus c. The solution to the differential equation, dy dx equals x squared over y to the fourth, where y of 3 is equal to 0, is, all right, we're going to use separation of variables here. So in this case, we could actually just cross multiply, right? y to the fourth times dy is x squared times dx. And now we integrate each side. We get y to the fifth over 5 is equal to x to the third over 3 plus c. Okay, now we need to find c. So we're going to substitute in a 3 for x here and a 0 for y here. So we get 0 equals, now 3 cubed over 3, that's 27 thirds, which is 9 plus c. So that c is equal to negative 9. All right, so we can now plug this negative 9 in for c here to get y to the fifth over 5 equals x cubed over 3 minus 9. Let's solve this for y. So multiplying each side by 5, we get y to the fifth equals 5 times x cubed over 3 minus 9. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 5 through to get 5x cubed over 3 minus 45. And now I'll take the fifth root of each side to get y equals the fifth root of 5x cubed over 3 minus 45. The integral of 8 over 1 plus x squared dx equals... All right, well, since 8 is a constant, we can pull it out front. And the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is just the inverse tangent of x. So we get 8 inverse tangent of x plus c. Don't forget to include the arbitrary constant. Uh, inverse tangent of x could also be written as arctan x. And also, here are just a few inverse trig integrals that you should know. The integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is the inverse sine of x plus c. The integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx equals the inverse tan of x plus c. That's the one that came up in this problem. And the integral of 1 over the absolute value of x, square root of x squared minus 1 dx, is the inverse secant of x plus c. If dy dx equals xy plus 3y, and if y equals 5 when x equals 0, then y equals... All right, we're going to separate variables again in this problem, but first we need to factor the right-hand side. So we're going to factor out a y to get y times x plus 3, and now we can separate by dividing by y and multiplying by dx. So we get dy over y equals x plus 3 times dx. All right, now we're ready to integrate each side. The integral of dy over y is ln absolute y. The integral of x is x squared over 2, and the integral of 3 is 3x. Don't forget to add your arbitrary constant c. Okay, so exponentiating each side, we have absolute y on the left and e to the x squared over 2 plus 3x plus c on the right. We could use a standard rule of exponents to change that right-hand side to e to the x squared over 2 plus 3x times e to the c, right? So y is equal to plus or minus, because of the absolute value, it's plus or minus e to the c times e to the x squared over 2 plus 3x, which we could just write as k times e to the x squared over 2 plus 3x. After all, plus or minus e to the c, whatever it turns out to be, it's just a constant. We'll call that constant k. Okay. Now we're ready to find k by using the initial condition, y equals 5 when x equals 0. So we plug in a 5 for y and a 0 for x to get 5 equals k times e to the 0. e to the 0 is just 1, so we get that k is equal to 5. Okay. 
So replacing k by 5 in the expression for y, we get y equals 5 times e to the x squared over 2 plus 3x. The differentiable functions f and g are defined for all real numbers x. Values of f, f prime, g, and g prime for various values of x are given in the table below. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 3 g prime of f of x, f prime of x dx. All right, I'm going to do this in two ways. They're both very similar, but uh, first way, uh, we could recognize that inside of here is just basically the chain rule, right? That's just the uh, derivative of g of f of x inside of there. So, uh, right, because by the chain rule, the derivative of this is g prime of f of x times f prime of x. So going backwards, we just get g of f of x, and by the fundamental theorem of calculus, that's going from zero to three. So we're gonna plug in the three, plug in the zero, and subtract. Now, we use the table to compute that f of three is one, so we replace f of three by one, and f of zero is two right, using this row of the table. So we just get g of 1 minus g of 2, and now we could use this row of the table here. g of 1 is negative 5, g of 2 is negative 2, so we have negative 5 minus negative 2, or negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3. All right, the second time, this is another way to do it, I'll do the substitution formally, right? So if I let u equal f of x, then du is f prime of x dx, but we have to change the limits. Since u is f of x, we change the limits to f of 0 and f of 3. Right now, again, using the table, f of 0 is 2 and f of 3 is 1. So that's what these new limits are. Okay, so anti-differentiating, we get g of u from 2 to 1, which is g of 1 minus g of 2. And again, using the table, that's a g of 1 is negative 5, g of 2 is negative 2, so we have negative 5 minus negative 2, or negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3. Consider the differential equation dy dx equals y plus 1 over x. Write an equation for the line tangent to the solution curve at the point negative 2, 0. Use the equation to approximate f of negative 1.5 where y equals f of x is the particular solution of the differential equation with initial condition f of negative 2 equals 0. All right, first we're going to write an equation for the line tangent to the solution curve at the point negative 2, 0. Okay, so we're given that uh, dy dx is equal to y plus 1 over x, so the slope at that point is just the derivative at negative 2, 0. So because dy dx is equal to y plus 1 over x, we can just replace y by 0 here and x by negative 2 to get 0 plus 1 over negative 2 or negative a half. That is the slope of the tangent line. And using the point, we can now write an equation of the line in point slope form. y minus 0 equals the slope negative 1 half times x minus negative 2. Or equivalently, y equals negative 1 half x minus 1, right? So... Um, this is plus 2, and then we distribute the negative 1 half through. Negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. All right, now for the uh, second part, we want to use the equation to approximate f of negative 1.5. So we just replace x by negative 1.5 there, and we get negative 1 fourth. So f of negative 1.5 is approximately negative 1 fourth or negative 0.25. Either answer is okay. Consider the differential equation dy dx equals y plus 1 over x. Find y equals f of x, the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f of negative 2 equals 0. Okay, we're going to go ahead and separate variables again. Notice how I multiplied by dx and divided by y plus 1 to get dy over y plus 1 equals dx over x. Now I integrate each side. They're both natural logarithms. We get the ln of absolute y plus 1 equals the ln of absolute x plus c. I'm going to subtract the ln of absolute x from each side because this will allow me to use the law of logarithms that says when you subtract two logarithms, you can write it as a quotient under a single logarithm. So we get the ln of absolute y plus 1 over x is equal to c. 
Uh, exponentiating each side, we get y plus 1 over x is equal to plus or minus e to the c. Notice how the absolute value gave us that plus or minus, which we could just call d, right? Uh, whether it's a positive number or a negative number, whatever it is, it's all just a number. Let's just call that number d to make our lives easier. Okay, so now I'm just using the initial condition here. When I plug in a negative 2 for x, I get a 0 for y. So we get 1 over negative 2 is equal to d. Right, so d is negative a half, so we get y plus 1 over x is equal to negative a half. Multiplying by x, we get y plus 1 equals negative a half x, and then we subtract 1 to get y equals negative 1 half x minus 1.